the Chiefs begin their first the number one overall seed defense from this week all the way into week 18. They have three games left. Will they be able to hold the rest of these teams off? Will they win out? Will the Titans and the Patriots allow them to continue to be the number one seed by losing this week and letting them get you know a game cushion? What's going to unfold? How are they going to do all of this down the stretch with COVID being now a bigger issue in the NFL, in the team, than it has been to this point. All of that's going to get covered right here on your Tuesday episode here at RGR Football. My name's Daniel Harms. Going to cover all this stuff for you. I actually went through Andy Reid's record in Kansas City playing a game off of a Thursday night game. So that mini buy, they call it. You know how he's got like a spectacular record off of regular buys. The Chiefs themselves actually are 4-5 and five in under Andy Reid coming off of that mini buy. Very, very interesting thing that I found out. They had those two Thursday night games in 2018 when Alex Smith was their last, or the last season Alex Smith was their quarterback. They played the Patriots on the opening Thursday night, but they didn't get the other Thursday night game off like the Super Bowl champions do, like they did in 2020 when they opened the season against the, te- the Texans. They had to play another Thursday night game. So now, coming off of this Thursday night win, this huge emotional win against the Chargers, the biggest game to that point in the season, now every game after for the Chiefs is a big game, hoping to keep that one seed. We've seen the Patriots, we've seen the Titans give it up in back-to-back nights, back to, excuse me, back-to-back days, Saturday and Sunday this past week, both of them losing, giving the Chiefs that number one seed, giving them a stranglehold right now. They can win out with the rest of these teams they have to play, but it's really not, it's not unheard of for them to do that. And with both the Titans and the Patriots having tough games this week, immediately on a Thursday night game, on a short week, the Titans have to play coming off that that brutal loss to the Pittsburgh Steelers. They have to play the 49ers who are out for blood to get into the postseason, looking to become a wild card team that gets hot right at the right moment and goes and makes a deep run in the playoffs, which I think they could considering the way the defense has played and Devo Samuel being one of the best players in the NFL. So I think the Titans could lose that game out, honestly, outright. I think they could lose it pretty handily without much cause for concern for the 49ers. And then the Patriots turn around after losing that game to the Colts. On Saturday, they have a you know an extra day to prepare for the Buffalo Bills. The Bills need that game to continue to make that playoff push right now. They're on, you know, the edge of their their wild card seats, hoping to make it in. They they need that game much more than the Patriots do. So this is a week that could solidify the Chiefs' number one seed if they continue with this over the Pittsburgh Steelers, a game that many Chiefs fans have lauded over the past decade. No one likes to play the Steelers. No one liked to see them come into town to see them play. They've had so many rough losses, so many Alex Smith short-led games where they didn't put up any points. And then the first time that Patrick Mahomes plays the Pittsburgh Steelers, he lights them up for 40-plus points. I don't think that's going to be the exact way this game goes along. Mahomes was a rookie, so the Steelers didn't really know what they were in for. Uh, They didn't have the defensive game plan. I think they'll play defensively a little bit better. And I think that, obviously, it's not going to be a surprise what Patrick Mahomes does to them at this point. I still think that the Chiefs will put up points in this game. But the record coming off of Thursday night games, like I said, was a bit surprising being 4-4-5 and and under Andy Reid, which is a little bit... Is it cause for concern? I don't think it's necessarily cause for concern. I think that there's some speculation as to why that would happen. It's a little weird to have in the mini by that extra rest. But again, this is the NFL. Games don't just aren't just handed to the teams. And I think that the Chiefs are in a position now where mentally they're going to be in this, this game coming off the Thursday night game. COVID now has begun to chip away a little bit at the health of the Chiefs starters. We obviously saw... Chris Jones, Willie Gay, not play last week because of being te- because of testing positive for COVID on that short week. It might have helped them out in the long run playing that Thursday night game and not having people pop more throughout the week. We don't really know when these tests took place, when they were activated, things like that. So we're going to have to take this as we go. And as it goes along with Travis Kelsey, Harrison Bucker, and Traverius Ward now testing positive for COVID, we're going to have to see how this plays out. Um, hopefully by the time you guys see this, there's a little bit more clarity on that. And if there is, be sure to let me know, because like I said, this was, this was recorded on Monday. So you guys know the Pittsburgh Steelers are the next team coming up. The offense for them does not 
pose a threat, okay? We've talked about that at, at length at this point already. We've seen the Steelers play. We know that they're not a very good offensive team. Ben Roethlisberger is a, I wouldn't even call him a shell of himself. He's like half of a shell. If you want to get that detailed into it, he's just not a good quarterback. He's not a good NFL player anymore. But the Steelers have no other choice. And that's who they're going to roll out there. They're going to have a bad offensive line. They're going to try to run the ball with Najee Harris. And they're going to try to get the ball out of Ben Roethlisberger's hands quickly. So what this comes down to is the offense. The offense has to put points on the board for the Chiefs. They have to get over 20 points in this game. They cannot turn the ball over. As we saw, you can't give the this, this Steelers defense life. You have to suffocate them early. You have to put points on them. You have to make things uncomfortable. And I think the Chiefs do have the weapons clearly to do that. You saw Justin Jefferson tear him up in the first quarter uh, a few weeks ago, and they were just unable to come back enough in that game. I don't think that the defense in Kansas City will allow a Pittsburgh Steelers team to come back in a game like that. So getting out to an early lead will help the Chiefs settle in. It's going to help the defense continue to put pressure on Ben Roethlisberger because if he's having to throw the ball, obviously you know that he's not going to be, he's pretty much a statue. He's worse than a statue. A statue you can kind of teeter around. Ben Roethlisberger can't move at all. So I think that this is shaping up to be, you know, shaping up to be the best stretch run for the Chiefs. I feel more confident with this one seed than I have earlier. The 14-2 and two was a little bit of a mirage, I think. I don't think they played nearly their best football going down the stretch. I think right now they're entering that with these last two games on offense. I know that they didn't look the best through the game against the Chargers, but I think Mahomes has confidence now. I think it's starting to grow a bit more. And I think that the Steelers present... Not a very good secondary for them. I think that, yeah, you've got Minka Fitzpatrick back there, but I think the corners can be taken advantage of. And I think that there's some some, some things that they can do. I know that we don't know if we're going to have, if the Chiefs will have Travis Kelsey or not. That's going to be um, more of a, a thing we'll find out later in the week. But let's just assume for now that Travis Kelsey can play, okay? There is, an, even though Devin Bush is a very athletic, speedy linebacker, I still believe that Travis Kelsey can get open on him one-on-one -on -one and things like that. I think that you're going to be more than more than able to get some run game going with both Clyde Edwards-Alaire, Daryl Williams. I think that they're going to be able to do that up front. Teams have run on the Steelers all season. I don't think that the this, this Chiefs team will struggle. Let's just use some quotes here. Struggle a little bit as we've seen them in some of these games lately, specifically against the Chargers. I think they struggled to run the ball a little bit. Um, that's, Probably not going to happen, but you never really know. TJ Watts nursing an injury. Um, that's not good for them. It's I still think he's going to be a guy you have to take account of. And I'm, I, I would imagine he lines up against Lucas Niang most of the time and they get Alex Highsmith a little bit quicker um, on Orlando Brown. So this is going to be an interesting matchup. I want to see what the offense does. I want to see more confidence building. I want to see Byron Pringle be a little bit more involved in the offense. Hopefully with Josh Gordon, assuming he's active in this game, get him on some deep balls and some one-on-one -on -one situations. They can definitely find a way to do that. And I think that there's a possibility he can catch a deep ball in this game. Take some shots down the field. Let Make these corners sweat a little bit and, and go just throw the ball on them. I think that's what they really have to do. I think it's what they will do. Now, one thing in this game that I think can actually be a problem for the Chiefs is if they struggle offensively. If they go back into that rut of not being able to move the ball. The tight, the, excuse me, the Titans. Yeah, as soon as they started to show signs of weakness, that's when the defense for the Steelers really stepped up. Now this is going to be an arrowhead. I, I do think that there's going to be some issues with just finding a way. To continue to move the ball, I'm hoping the turnovers don't show up again. If they do, then they're going to find a they're going to find a way to be in this game. The Steelers, that's kind of what they do. They just don't play very good offense, but I, they once they get confidence on defense, that's when they play their best, and that's really when they can start to come back in the game. Because Ben isn't going to just go out there and throw for 400 yards. It's not going to happen anymore. So they can just kind of chip away and get Deontay Johnson into some yak positions. Maybe get a 50-50 ball to chase Claypool down the field just on a, on, a, on a whim. So there's the one thing that is is if this Steelers defense gets confidence at any point in the game, if they get a lucky turnover, if they start to compile some three and outs later in this game and find a turnover in there, that's when this is going to start to get a little hairy. I don't expect that to be the issue for this game. I do expect the Chiefs to come out and put a good number on them, but we're... Right now, this is this is Tuesday, so there could be any number of things that go wrong up until then. Obviously, 
we don't want any of that to happen. So, as of right now, I assume that everybody except for Harrison Bucker will play in this game. And if, like I said, there's more information that has come out on Tuesday, make sure to let me know in the comment section. But again, just want to emphasize that record for Andy Reid after in Kansas City on these mini buys. Four and five. Not great. So I'm hoping that they come out focused, confident, and looking to really seal and con convincingly win the one seed. Take it all the way through. Get yourselves some nice, earned, well-earned rest because the way this season started, who would have thought the Chiefs would be in this position? But this is how they find a way to hold on to it, take it all the way through. And realistically, this is they're playing the best of any team in the AFC right now. Even with the offensive struggles that they had, they are playing the best. This is how they do it. And I do believe that they can do it. We all know that they can do it. We've seen them do it. This is the time where I think they can match just like they did in 2019, playing their best football down the stretch, getting that first round by and finding it all the way through to the Super Bowl. What I want you guys to do in the comment section is give me one player on the Steelers, doesn't matter, offense or defense, that you're looking out for in this game, that you think could be a game record, could be a, a big reason why this game's closer than it really should be. I want you to tell me why, and I, I want to see it in the comments. So you guys, make sure to do that. Make sure you're liking, hitting that sub and the bell notification for everything here at RGR Football. Make sure to tune in tomorrow night. I will have a film review for you guys. It's going to be Tyreek Hill centric there's going to be a little bit of talk about what the Chargers defense did down the stretch to allow the Chiefs to come back in this game we're going to include a little bit of, of Travis Kelsey because how can you not talk about Travis Kelsey with those huge runs after the catch he had so it's going to be offensive centric it's going to be Patrick Mahomes Tyreek Hill Travis Kelsey and we're going to be all about those three going in to Sunday against the Pittsburgh Steelers you guys have a great night Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR Football. Click these videos to see more and subscribe to RGR Football.